Social Security Insolvency. What is it and are your benefits at risk? That's a great question and exactly what we're going to focus on right here in the video. So let's get right into it. All right, now this is a question that was recently brought to my attention down below in the comment section where this person reached out and said, what is Social Security Insolvency? Are my benefits at risk? And can you please explain this in further detail? So that's what I want to talk about here in this video because it is actually a very serious situation and I want to talk through all the details of exactly what Social Security insolvency actually means. Let's get into it and talk through all those details. However, really fast before we do, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here or if you haven't done so yet, please make sure to subscribe by hitting the button right down below the video as it's totally free to do so and because I am your one and only daily advocate, I'm here for you right by your side each and every day watching all this new information, hitting the wire, doing the research and breaking it all down into these short videos so you can stay posted on what's actually going Going on as things are changing very rapidly right now and of course I want you to understand how it's going to impact you your money your benefits your lifestyle your bank account and of course everything just going on right now during this very busy time so again thanks so much for joining me please subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet and also remember I'm here for you in any way that I possibly can be that's my dedication that's my commitment and as always that's my promise to you and everybody right here in the community all right thanks again let's get into it and talk about Social Security insolvency what does it actually mean and how how does this pertain to your monthly benefit? All right, now this is something that we've talked about many, many times right here on the channel. If you've been watching the videos for any length of time now, I've talked about it as well as so many of the reports that are coming out talking about social security insolvency and all kinds of things like this. But let me explain in further detail, what does this really mean? Because sounds fancy, sounds pretty complicated, sounds like a smart word, but what does it really mean at the end of the day? Does it mean that benefits are going to be ending? Does it mean the benefits are going to be reduced? Does it mean that it's coming tomorrow? You know what I mean? There's so many different questions about this. So let me work my way through this one thing at a time because within this big question of what is social security insolvency and are my benefits at risk, there's a lot of moving parts about this. All right, so number one, is it coming tomorrow, next month, or next year? No, it's not. In fact, as of right now, according to the most recent reports out of the CBO, Congressional Budget Office, as well as the Social Security Bo uh, Board of Trustees and all the reports, it looks like it's coming in about 10 years or so, okay? So it's a long time out there. However, what does it actually mean? Does it mean that benefits are going to be ending? No, it doesn't mean the benefits are going to be ending. However, according to the reports, it does look like benefits could be reduced pretty substantially as of right now in the event that nothing is done by Congress to make sure that Social Security remains solvent for many more years to come. There's that word again. What does it mean though? All right, now let me explain the situation of what this insolvency type of situation actually means and what it shakes out to. All right, so here's what the whole situation is. Now, obviously, as you know, because you you know, you've spent years and years of your life working and paying into Social Security taxes. So every week or every other week or whenever you get paid, you looked at your uh, you looked at your paycheck, right? And you looked at your pay stub. When you looked at your paycheck, you thought, "Whoa, what happened? To all my money? It all went away. <laughs> Who took it? Where'd it go? You know what I mean?" And then you look at your pay stub as you're trying to find answers. Who took it? Where'd all my money go? I thought I put in 40 hours this week and I'm getting you know nothing for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So as you look at your pay stub, you see, wait. Federal uh, federal taxes were taken out, state taxes were taken out if you're in a state that has state taxes, and then you see something else on your line, FICA, what is this? Well, this is Social Security and Medicare taxes that are being taken out. Okay, now what does this mean? As you pay in through Social Security payroll taxes, in other words, on all of your income, you're paying uh, that Social Security tax. Now here's the thing, you pay half of the tax and your employer takes uh, pays half the tax on your behalf as well. If you're self-employed, you pay all of the taxes into Social Security as the employee and the employer. However, that's not really the case for most people. However, here's what it comes down to which by the way, there are there are also income caps on it. This year in 2023, the income cap is $160,200 as far as maximum taxable earnings. But we can talk about all that in a separate video. My point is, now all, all this uh, taxes that you pay uh, into Social Security through your payroll taxes goes into the Social Security Trust Fund. Okay, it's a big collection of money, right? So all the people out there that are paying in Social Security taxes through their paychecks, you know, and everything like this on a weekly or every other week basis, things like this, whatever it happens to be, it all goes into the Social Security Trust Fund. 
Okay, now what? What happens there? Well, according to the last report out of the Social Security Board of Trustees, they had a little bit less than uh, $3 trillion in the uh, Social Security Trust Fund. So, in fact, they had, according to the report, $2.89 trillion in the trust fund. It's a lot of money, right? It is. It's a lot of money, right? But here's what we do know. This money is being paid out to over 60 million beneficiaries every single month. In fact, they're paying out hundreds of billions of dollars every single uh, year for all the Social Security beneficiaries. So what this simply means is that the money is being paid out of the Social Security Trust Fund to the Social Security beneficiaries. At the same time, all the people out there that are paying in through their payroll taxes into the trust fund. So it's like, let me give you a quick analogy. It's like a bathtub, okay? Above the bathtub, you've got the faucet. At the bottom of the bathtub, you've got the drain, right? So basically what the number or what the analogy that I'm giving here is the faucet or the money pouring into the trust. Oh, by the way, the bathtub is the trust fund in this analogy, okay? So basically what it, what it looks like is this. The faucet pouring um, you know, money or water into the bathtub would be the payroll taxes coming into the trust fund. The drain at the bottom would be the money being paid out to beneficiaries each and every month. So that's what the analogy would be, right? You got one spout pouring in, the bathtub is the big collection, the $2.89 trillion of trust fund money, and then the drain at the bottom would be uh, the payouts going to the beneficiaries every single month. Kind of makes sense? Pretty good analogy, I have to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? We can all visualize exactly what this looks like, right? All right, so... Now what we're looking at is this, the spout pouring water or money into the trust fund is let's just call it a two inch spout. Okay, cool. However, here's the problem. The drain at the bottom is a three inch drain going out. So in other words, the water or the money coming into the trust fund is less than the drain or the, you know, the expenditures going out to the beneficiaries as in the benefits being paid out. So basically what this means is that the trust fund is slowly, slowly depleting as in more money is being paid out to beneficiaries than what money is actually coming in through payroll taxes. Make sense? All right, so now that we have this understanding, here's what we know about this and what this all shakes out to as far as insolvency. Simply what it means in about 10 years time, according to the reports, is that the Social Security Trust Fund would be insolvent. In other words, the bathtub, all the water in the bathtub or the metaphorical money in the bathtub, the $2.89 trillion is gone. Now the bathtub is empty, okay? We've got the spout pouring in and it immediately goes right out the drain, which is the money going out to beneficiaries. However, remember, the analogy that I'm giving here is the faucet pouring into the bathtub is a two inch spout and the drain going out is a three inch drain. Okay, what does this mean? It means that no matter how you cut it, unless you open up the spout pouring more water or money into the trust fund or into the, you know, the, the, the accounts of social security, unfortunately, they'll have to cut the amount of benefits going out because there's simply not enough money coming into the trust fund to pay out all of the beneficiaries at their current levels. Kind of makes sense here? All right, so here's what they're suggesting. In the event that insolvency happens, in other words, the bathtub in this analogy is completely empty. In the event the bathtub or the $2.89 trillion is completely empty, gone, as in it's totally empty, zero dollars left in the trust fund, they'll only be able to pay out whatever money is coming in through payroll taxes at that given time. So basically what it is, it's like a revolving door. The money comes in through one revolving door through payroll taxes, and it's immediately paid out yet again to the beneficiaries. The problem is the money coming in is way less than the money going out, okay? So it's like, um, well, I was going to give another analogy, but I don't want to, you know, make it too confusing here. Let's just say this much. The money coming in is about 77% of what it would need to be uh, in order to pay out to the beneficiaries. So the whole story is, as of right now, in the event of insolvency, they would be able to pay out 77% of promised benefits to the beneficiaries. So what does that mean on a uh, dollars and cents basis? Here's what it comes down to. Let's just say that insolvency happened tomorrow. It's not gonna happen tomorrow, okay? Don't worry about it. It's not happening tomorrow. It's not happening next week. It's not happening next month. And it's definitely not happening next year. It's out about 10 years. However, let's just say that it happens tomorrow. Well, let's just say it happens next month for easy uh, purposes here. Let's just say next month insolvency happens. Uh-oh, the trust fund is empty. Now what happens? Well, according to the reports, they would pay out 77% of promised benefits. 
Okay, let's just run the math on this and what it would look like. Let's just use round numbers so that we can all see the illustration here. Let's just say that you're receiving a $1,000 benefit right now and the trust fund is still, you know, has a little bit of money in it. Next month, it is now insolvent. They can only pay out 77% of benefits according to their, uh, you know, their calculations. What this would shake out to be is that now your $1,000 benefit has been reduced by 23%. In other words, they can only pay out 77% of that. Your $1,000 benefit is now a $770 benefit. That is what it means. Now you see the effects behind this? Yeah, that's pretty major, right? So in the event of, of insolvency, we are looking at a potential 77, sorry, um, a 23% reduction to monthly benefits or a 77% payout. In other words, you're only getting 77% of the promised benefits that they've said. So in this analogy, like I just said, your $1,000 benefit would be cut down by 23% or 70, uh, $770 is what it would shake out to. That'd be a reduction in this example of $230 every single month. That's huge. That's, that's a lot. Could you imagine what would a 23% reduction to your benefit be to your lifestyle right now if that just happened tomorrow or next month? It would not be a pretty picture for a lot of people, especially right now during this very high inflationary time. However, let me throw this out there one uh, really quickly as one quick uh, last note here. Are prices going to be higher or lower in 10 years from right now on everything? Again, bread, gas, cars, housing, shelter, clothing, healthcare, everything, literally anything you can think of, doesn't matter what it is. Are prices going to be higher or lower? I think we can all say it together right now higher, right? Feels like we're on some kind of game show. I'm going to go with higher. Yep, you're right, higher. <laughs> okay. Are taxes going to be higher or lower in 10 years? We can all say it together now. One, two, three, higher. Yes, you're 100% correct. Taxes will be higher. Expenses will be higher. Cost on everything will be higher. So the point is, in 10 years from now, would this be even more detrimental to the beneficiaries? Yeah, it would be because can you, let's, let's look at this. Are benefits going to increase so much that every beneficiary can take on a 23% reduction to benefits? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say no, okay? The real cost of living and like what we see every single year with the annual cost of living adjustment, it's not keep, keeping up with real inflation. It's not keeping up with the real cost of living. Therefore, in 10 years from right now, our beneficiary is going to be um, on par with the real cost of living or are we going to be even further behind? Yep, you're right. We're going to be even further behind. So a 23% reduction to benefits, according to the reports, would be even more detrimental to beneficiaries because like I just said, everything will be more expensive. This is just how the economy works. This is just how it works because of our friend inflation and the depletion of the purchasing power of our dollars, right? Because the Federal Reserve continues to print money and it just continues to deplete our dollars and things like this. In fact, not that long ago, I was out in a separate video talking about the depletion of the uh, the US dollar. In fact, it's lost 96% of its purchasing power since 1913. So in the last, what is that? A hundred and, well, I don't know, over a little, about 110 years ago, right? Um, in that in that amount of time, the dollar has lost 96% of its purchasing power. So in other words, if you had a dollar back in 1913, you got four pennies today. So, I mean, you can clearly see what I'm talking about here, okay? <laughs> in another 10 years, it's gonna be the same thing. That four cents you got, it might only be worth three or two and a half cents, you know what I mean? So anyway, my point is, I hope this explains the situation a little bit further and explains the insolvency type of situation that we are currently dealing with, what this means for beneficiaries, and um, you know some of the ramifications if Congress does not act. Now, do we think that Congress is going to act? I don't have a clue. I mean, here's the thing. Congress, I don't know. Can we really trust them for anything anymore? I'm going to leave that up to you to decide. I'm not going to throw my opinions in here, but I mean, honestly... They haven't really been all that impressive lately, right? I think we can all probably agree. Uh, they're not impressing anybody these days, right? So anyway, I hope this explains the insolvency situation a little bit further and what it means for you, your monthly benefits, and everything else going on right now. Of course, I'll keep you posted as I do get more information. So please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Share the video with your friends, family, social media, so they can also understand Social Security insolvency. And then again, go back and check out any of the other thousands of videos here on the channel. Also, leave your comments, your feedback, and your questions down below. If you'd like me to come back and elaborate on this further, of course, I can always do that. But 
I hope this gives you a better picture of what insolvency really means. Yeah, so anyway, just think about the bathtub analogy. I feel like that's a really good one. We can all relate to that. We all know, you know, what a bathtub looks like. Uh, at some point in our life, we've either seen one or we've experienced something like that. You know what I mean? So it's a good analogy. Just picture the spout, the drain, things like that, and the bathtub being the trust fund. So anyway, I know it's kind of weird, but you know what? It's actually a good um, visual representation of what the really the whole picture looks like so anyway hope this one helps you again thank you so much for the question i really do appreciate it enjoy your day and again subscribe down below check out the other videos and i'll catch you again later in the next video